Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, so I'm back with another podcast. I had to come on here and do an update on the whole Joshua Brown situation. If you're not on my Instagram page, um, follow me. We're talking about it over there. And so I wanted to come on and do a podcast. Um, This whole case is just not sitting well with me at all. I broke down everything. I broke down my speculations of Amber Geiger and both of them, Jean, knowing each other, right? After that video, somebody sent me pictures of both of them, Jean. It's a picture of Botham Jean, Amber Geiger, and another friend. And Botham Jean has his arms around both women. So everything, you know, my speculations, everything was confirmed that they did know each other. A lot of people in Dallas and in uh, the state of Texas hit me up and was like, from the time that man was killed, that had always been the conversation amongst the people is that they were having some type of affair. They were sleeping together. They were, you know, low key dating. That had always been put out there. Now, another thing, a lot of people were posting a link to an interview that a Vice show did with one of the witnesses who was threatened. Um, I know about her when I was speaking about the video that I cannot find that was scrubbed off the Internet. I wasn't talking about her. When this first came out last year, when the shooting, everything happened, it was a lot of information on the net. All of this information is being scrubbed. There was another woman that came out and she basically had recorded their conversation because she heard the yelling and the arguing and she started recording for evidence. You know what I'm saying? So she could call the police like, you know, it's like a, you know, I guess a domestic violence dispute. And so she was recording and she hears Amber say something to him. And then both and Jean says something back and then the shots ring out. That is the video I'm looking for. That is the person they initially posted that video online. And um, my friend is just swearing by this video. He watched it. We've looked for it for days now. We cannot find the video. There's two women, not just the bunny lady. So when I'm talking about that other video, I'm not talking about the bunny lady that Philip Avise show um, interviewed. Okay, so let's make that clear. It's a whole nother video that I'm speaking of. So this case is just getting crazier and crazier. So they're saying that in the days leading to Josh's death, he was so scared of testifying because back in 2018, a few months after both of them was killed, he got into an um, into a scuffle outside of a nightclub. It was something, he ran into some guys he knew from high school, words were exchanged, they got into a fight. And you know, nowadays, you just can't fight and walk away, you know, to fight another day. No, because if I lose, now I got to pull out my gun and shoot. So I'm assuming the guy lost the fight. He pulls out the gun. He starts shooting at Joshua and his friend. Joshua's friend gets hit in the head. He dies. Joshua is shot in the foot. So because of that, Joshua had been laying low because he didn't want these people to come and finish the job. So when they were trying to get him to get up on the stand and testify, he didn't want to because he did not want to alert these guys, you know what I'm saying, to his whereabouts. So he flew to Cali. Okay, now keep that in mind because I'm going to come back. I'm going to circle around back to that. Okay, so he flew to Cali. The the prosecuting team contacted him, basically said, if you don't come and be a witness, you will be held in contempt. You'll be thrown in jail, blah, blah, blah. So he finally agrees to come back to Texas. When he lands in Texas, he goes from the airport straight to the courtroom to give his testimonial. So you can tell how emotional he was, not only for both them, Gene, but the fact that this is something that's being broadcasted worldwide. These guys may know who he is. They may come for him. Just all types of stuff is going through this young man's head, okay? So another thing I want to go ahead and clear up, um, because there was somebody who was mad, like, oh, you bloggers are spreading misinformation. When it first came out, one of the lawyers for the family is the one who came out and said that Josh was shot in the mouth. Well, now that the autopsy's out, they're saying he was not shot in the mouth. He was shot in the lower body. Okay, but if that's the only information we have to go off of at the time and that's what's being, you know, spread by the mainstream media, then why would I not say that he got shot in the mouth when that's what's being reported? Okay, so he was not shot in the mouth, but he was shot and killed. Nonetheless, he gets on the witness stand. He testifies. And then two days later, he's killed. Now, they're saying the three men who shot him were Jacarius Mitchell, age 20, Michael Mitchell, 32, 
Thaddeus Green, 22. They're all from Alexandria, Louisiana. But what's interesting is that they're saying that these dudes drove all the way from Louisiana. Not saying Louisiana is not right next door. It's not like they came from New York. But still, they drove all the way from Alexandria, Louisiana to make a drug deal with Joshua Brown. Hmm. Where did I hear this whole drug scenario before? Oh, in my last video where I talked about them trying to assassinate both them Jean's character by making it look like he was some pothead. So, like I was saying before, they're going to try their best to assassinate his character. So now, you know, he went from being this stellar witness with a good character, good background, to being some type of nefarious drug dealer. So much so that these dudes were willing to drive from Louisiana just to make a drug deal from him. But this is the same man that was so scared to come back to Texas that he flew to Cali a few days before the trial. Somebody who's that nervous, I don't think they're going to engage in drug dealing and bring more attention to themselves. But maybe I'm tripping, okay? So let me go ahead and play you guys these news reports and also the police. They just um, did a breaking news segment where they're talking about the shooters and what, you know, allegedly happened. So y'all go ahead and check both these videos out and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Tonight, the manhunt is underway for the killer who gunned down a key witness in the Amber Geiger murder trial. Dallas police say there are no leads or suspects in the Friday night shooting death of 28-year-old Joshua Brown. Please state your name for the record. Uh, Joshua Brown. Brown lived across the hall from Botham Jean and testified about what he heard when Geiger opened the door and shot and killed his neighbor. Geiger, who claimed she thought she was entering her own apartment when she encountered Jean, was sentenced to 10 years in prison for murder. She was crying, uh, explaining what happened, what she thought happened, saying she came into the wrong apartment. Brown's murder has raised concerns and triggered a flurry of speculation that he was targeted for testifying in the Geiger murder case, that he was seen as a snitch. A family lawyer said Brown had been shot in the mouth. That turned out to be false. Dallas police say Brown was shot multiple times in the lower body, he was in the parking lot of a Dallas apartment complex. I was blown away. I, I had the family lawyer, who also place. represented uh, both of Jean's family, says Joshua Brown was reluctant to testify. Why was he nervous about testifying in the Geiger trial? I think he had some apprehensions about being seen as an informant or a snitch. And then he had some personal people, uh, personal beef with people who did not, at, to, the, to that time, know that he was still in the city of Dallas. That trial revealed that he was, in fact, here. In November of last year, just a few months after Botham Jean was killed, Joshua Brown was hanging out at this club in Dallas. He got into an altercation, was shot and wounded. Another person was killed. The attorney representing his family says that since then, he had feared for his life, worrying that whoever carried out that shooting was going to come back and finish the job. He wasn't there with the victim. Brown's family lawyer says all of the people involved in that shooting attack knew each other from their high school years and he fears the exposure from testifying in the Geiger trial made Joshua Brown a target again and that he was still getting threats. I have been told that he had concerns about people. Yeah, he wasn't living on the run, per se, but he did have concerns about people knowing his whereabouts. Got it. He's, he's, he's watching his back. Right. We take you live to Dallas now. Police are giving an update on the investigation into the murder of a key witness in the Amber Geiger murder trial. An arrest warrant has been issued. Let's listen in. How hard it is and how much pain is related to losing a loved one. No family member should have to suffer that kind of pain. I want you to know that the Dallas Police Department is working diligently on your behalf to solve this case. It's our policy that we pursue all murder suspects. We pursue them aggressively. We pursue them thoroughly with the hope of bringing closure to the family. As you know, I've said it before, that we value human life. We understand that there are some in the community that do not, but the Dallas Police Department does value human life. Through the dedicated work of my detectives, we have identified three suspects in the Joshua Brown murder. Jacarius Mitchell, black male, 20 years of age. Michael Mitchell, black male, 32 years of age. Thaddeus Green, 
black male, 22 years of age. According to suspect Jacarius Mitchell, all three suspects came from Alexandria, Louisiana, to purchase drugs from Joshua Brown. Thaddeus Green was the facilitator. He's the one that contacted Joshua Brown. As they drove to the offense location, Thaddeus Green gets out of the vehicle, has a conversation with Joshua Brown, which escalates into physical altercations. At which time, Jacarius Mitchell gets out of the vehicle and he states that Joshua Brown orders him back into the vehicle and shoots him in the chest. As he's laying in the vehicle, he hears two more gunshots. He says that Thaddeus Green shot Joshua Brown two times. According to the autopsy report, Joshua Brown was shot two times in his lower body. One was a through and through, and the other entered his body just below the spine, traveled upward, damaging vital organs. Thaddeus Green also took the backpack that Joshua Brown had, as well as the gun that Joshua Brown had. Michael Mitchell was the driver. He dropped Thaddeus Green off at an unknown location, and he took Jacarius Mitchell to Promise Hospital to receive treatment. He was later transported to Parkland Hospital, where he is currently in police custody. We will execute a warrant for capital murder on him today. We also received numerous tips as it related to the killing of Mr. Brown, and in that, we executed a search warrant at Mr. Brown's apartment where we confiscated 12 pounds of marijuana, 143 grams of THC cartridges, and $4,000 in cash. We have also issued capital murder warrants for the other two suspects, Michael Mitchell and Thaddeus Green. I want to assure the citizens of Dallas that we will continue to be transparent and we will provide updates as they materialize concerning this case. We as the police department need your help in capturing the two fugitives that are not in custody. Um, we've partnered with our federal partners and we're in pursuit of them as I speak. If you know the whereabouts of these two suspects, please contact your local police department or the Dallas Police Department at 214-373-8477 or 214-671-3690. These suspects are to be considered dangerous because they're armed. Again, I want to thank you for coming out under such short notice. I thank you for trusting us to provide you with true and accurate information. I thank you, our community members, for partnering with us and believing in us as we pursue these fugitives. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my detectives. I've said it before and I'll say it again. They are the most talented, dedicated, committed detectives in the country. They are currently still in Louisiana pursuing the suspects. As you know, there's been speculation and rumors that have been shared by community leaders claiming that Mr. Brown's death was related to the Amber Geiger trial and somehow the Dallas Police Department was responsible. I assure you that is simply not true. And I encourage those leaders to be mindful of their actions moving forward because their words have jeopardized the integrity of the city of Dallas as well as the Dallas Police Department. Thank you very much. All right, so you guys just saw both of those videos. So like I said, this case to me is just getting more and more sinister. Now, what's even more disturbing is a video that I just posted on Instagram. A few you guys sent it to me in my DMs. And basically, it's the judge, Miss Tammy Kemp, the same one who was hugging and giving, you know, Amber Geiger motivational speeches, handing her a Bible, giving out free hugs and shit. So when it comes to Joshua Brown, very cold, very irritated. And she's basically saying in this clip and i'm going to play it a few times so you guys can hear it she's saying of course i'm surprised he came 
So what are you trying to insinuate? So you're saying that you're surprised that he came, meaning that this dude is obviously scared for his life. So why was he not provided even more protection? Y'all go ahead and check out this clip. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. And like I always say, the rabbit hole definitely goes deep. This situation to me is just not cool. So it's funny that towards a witness who's able to help, you know, bring some type of solace to, you know, some type of justice and solace to both them Jean's family, the judge is very, very cold and dismissive. Okay, look at her demeanor. Look at her face. Look at her disposition. Very cold and dismissive. But towards the killer... She's crying tattoo tears and hugging her and giving her a Bible. Something is not right there. Why does she not show that same empathy and concern towards a young man who put his life on the line to do the right thing? Because he didn't have to testify. He can be like, fuck it, take me to jail, throw away the key. I'm not getting up there and testifying in front of the world because I have people who may want to do something to me. So why was her disposition towards somebody who was doing the right thing so cold and distant, but yet instill her disposition towards a murderer? Okay, somebody who kills somebody in cold blood, so motherly and warming. So, like I said, this whole case just does not sit well with me. I'm not buying this whole shit that three guys came all the way from Louisiana to purchase drugs from this dude who just happened to be in town from Cali, you know, to, to, to testify at a murder trial. That just doesn't make any sense, okay? At 12, 15. Yeah, it was 12, 15. Exactly. If I'm not mistaken, it was 12. Now you see something. Now you see now, you done fucked up, you know that, don't you? I see what I'm saying. I, no, I, I thought... No, so, you know what I'm saying? You done I, fucked up now, you know that, don't you? I, yeah, I, I know you done fucked up, don't you? Something ain't cleaning the buttermilk. I'm not buying none of this food gazy bullshit that they're trying to sell. I'm just not. It just doesn't make any sense, okay? They could buy weed and drugs in the state of Louisiana. No need to bring shit across state lines because then it makes it a federal case. That just does not make sense, you know? And I just don't see his mind being on, you know, trying to sell drugs and, and, and make this big drug deal when literally he ran to Cali just a few days before the trial. So him trying to make a, a drug connect would be the last thing on his mind. I'm not buying it. Y'all can call me a crazy conspiracy theorist. It's all to the good, okay? But I'm just not buying this whole situation. Rest in peace to Joshua Brown. You know, part of me just wishes he wouldn't even testify at this point. Because for him to put his life on the line, for him to testify, only to have the judge basically spit in his face by not being impartial and hugging and carrying on with Amber, to have the police officer in the courtroom brushing her hair, and then most importantly, to have the brother say that he forgives her, he wants to give her a hug, and he doesn't want her to do time. I personally want the best for you. I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. I can only imagine how he felt. Like, dude, I done came out of, you know, from Cali down here. They done pressured me. I'm literally putting my life on the line only for y'all to want to hug and kiki and, and, you know, smile up in the killer's face. Like, what the hell is really going on? You know, like I said, I have the picture of Amber and both them Jean. I'm not going to put it in this video. I don't feel comfortable posting it because this picture has literally been scrubbed off the internet. This person just happened to save it at that time. And the caption on this picture, um of the person who wrote the picture was a white woman off of social media that knew them. And she kept it 100 in that post. So I have it. I've seen it. I'm not going to post it. But both them, Jean and Amber Geiger, definitely knew each other. So conspiracy theory or not, my tin hat is tingling. There's definitely more than meets the eye, okay? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping, you guys. I don't want to make this video too long. Let me know your thoughts on this update concerning the whole Joshua Brown murder. Do you believe that it was done by these three guys who were just looking to do a drug deal? Or do you feel like, once again, they're just trying to assassinate Joshua's character? And, you know, are you buying this whole scenario anyways? I, I really don't feel like it was these three black guys. They're probably going to end up pinning it on them. Or else if it was them, they're probably, you know, forced to do it. 
it. But I believe that it's a lot deeper than that. Being that he was a main key witness, I, I'm just not buying how everything played out. I don't believe in coincidences and, and happenstance. This looks like a well executed plan to get rid of the main witness, you know, who can keep Amber locked away for when she does file her appeal. So the whole situation is just really crazy. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Please make sure to share the video. Thumbs it up because um, YouTube will definitely demonetize this and push it down in the algorithm so people don't see it. Please make sure to share the video. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces.